Welcome to our LLM mini series, which is about building a language interface to the Databricks API. And for that, we prepared a CLI based on Python and the very popular LangChain library. So what would happen in this instance is uh, you enter a query in English, and then afterwards, a large language model will choose the correct endpoint documentation in order to build out the request link. And then in the second step, the actual request is performed to the Databricks API and the response will be received. And optionally, this can be further processed in order to answer an initial query. So let's jump right back in. On the left-hand side, we can see our actual CLI. And on the right-hand side, there's a Databricks UI where the changes will be visible that we cause with our English queries. So how about we start off by listing us all jobs that have the tag NLP. So here we stated, please return a list of all jobs. And then afterwards, please give us the job names with the tag NLP and their job ID. And as you can see here, the endpoint documentation jobs list text was chosen, which is the correct one. And then the request link is built and actually executed. And as you can see here, sentiment classification level 223 and level 123 are exactly those which are also displayed on the right if you filter it down here on NLP. So what we could do now is we could jump to one of these jobs and actually modify the permissions, which is another functionality that we've built in. So here we stated we would like to add an entry to this permission group. In this instant, a developer group, since there are only admins currently available, with the permission can view. And now the permissions are pulled and then the permissions modified before there's a new request constructed, which would respect the changes that we required. And as you can see here now, there's the new entry popping up for our developer group with the can view permissions. And now the beautiful thing is about large language models is that we don't need to write new code now. We can just state, for example, that we would like to switch these permissions to can manage by changing the language. So now we're executing that. Uh, the workflow is the same here. We're pulling the current permissions. In this instance, we are not adding a permission. We are modifying the permission dictionary and then sending another request, which are with our new payload. And if you compare here now, it's can view. Let's refresh that. And as you can see here now, it successfully changed to can manage. So at the start, we mentioned that there are also other capabilities that we can do, such as uh, machine learning functionalities. And for that, we will be switching to the model view in the Databricks UI. And what we can see here is the model sentiment classifier. And there's currently version three, which is, which is in production and the version six, which is not yet staged in any way. So how about we start off with getting some information about this model overall? Just a very generic phrase, please give me all infos for the model sentiment classifier. It picks the endpoint documentation, ML flow registered models get. And as a response, we obtain, okay, there is one model in production, which is version three with a particular run ID. And also there's a version six with current stage none, which is uh, exactly what's showing up here on the right. So that's fine. So how about we check whether it would make sense to promote version six into production for that, of course, we would require it to be a bit better regarding the performance. So for that, we can actually grab the run ID and add a certain command. In this instance, please return the F1 score to get some intuition how good the model actually is. 
and it states here it's 91.57%. So how about we compare that now with the newest version? Okay, as it turns out, the F1 score is now higher. It's 92.2%, which means it's uh, the better model, at least according to the F1 score. So it would actually make sense, at least according to the F1 metric, to promote this model in production, which is exactly what we're going to do now. So now we created a very specific query and reason being is that we need to include all the information that is necessary for the model here to build an actual payload. And what we can see here on the right, it actually switched around. Version 6 is in production and version 3 is in archived, which is exactly what we wanted. So I guess that's it for a quick overview of the functionalities that you could build out by um, using LangChain and Python in order to offer a natural language interface to an API.